Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. Starting today, you and I will work together all the math problems that you see here in this book, the GMAT Official Guide 2022. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. You and I, as I said before, just now, will prepare ourselves for the more math portion of the exam. As you already know, math portion has two types of questions, data sufficiency and problem solving. Today we'll begin our journey with problem solving. Problems that you find, that you'll find on page number 112. That's where, that's where the story begins. Problem number one, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. We are given a, 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 a picture like this and we're simply being asked to find out the parameter of this thing. It's very straightforward. We are told that each side equals one. So we just count how many sides there are. So here is one, two, and this portion right here, and this portion right here would make it three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, this portion is nine, this, this portion, and this portion is nine. Then we have 10, 11, and 12. It seems to me that the parameter is 12. That's all. The answer is 12. Number two. In number two, we are being asked to find the difference between the maximum revenue and minimum revenue. Let's see what we have. So we are told that we have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Here are the prices, here are the quantities. 40 40, 50, 40, 50, 40, 50, 40, 50, and then we have 200, 240, 220, and 300. Well, maximum revenue is right here. This is where I, you see among the here, 40, 50, 40, 50, this is the higher price, 50 and 50, and among the quantity, this is the highest quantity. So that's going to be the maximum. 5 times 3 is 15, so it's 15,000, that's one there is. That's the maximum, 15,000. And where is the minimum? That's, that's 200 is the lowest price there and 40, there you go, that's the lowest one. 4 times 2 is 8, so it's just 8. So it looks like the difference between the maximum revenue and the minimum revenue among these four nights, it happens to be $7,000, that's all. Number 3. On number 3, we are told that four people are going to take a trip. They're going to take a trip and they're going to drive four people and they're going to drive each of them. Each is going to drive an average of 80 miles. And here's what we're told. We're told that car, we have Carmen, Juan, Maria and Raphael, he drives 72, 78, 83. The simple question simply is, how many miles must Raphael has, has driven, must he have driven, in order for the average for the four people to be 80? Let's find out, shall we? If we want the average of 80, she drove 72 miles, so obviously we have to make up a, we have to make up a deposit of 8 miles, because she's 8 miles short. Here we have a deposit of 2 miles, here we have a circle of 3 miles, there you go. That's a negative 10, negative 10, and a positive 3 is going to give us negative 7. So all of this gives us a deficit of negative 7, which means that this person has to make up 7 more miles. Not only has to driven, not only has to drive 80 miles of his own share, but he has to make up he has to make up a deficit of 7 miles from because this first three people drove 7 miles less. He must have driven 87 miles. This guy must have driven 87 miles. Number four. In number four, we are told that we are going to get 15% on the first $500 in commission. And then anything above it, we are going to get 20% over 500. If we make sales of over 500, we are going to get 20% in commission. We have already made, so first, first 500 is very straightforward. First 500 is 15%, 10%, 10% we know is 20 
10% uh, is $50. 10% of 500 is $50, therefore 5% would be $25, so that's really straightforward. We're going to earn $75 on the first 500. We are told that we have made a total sales. We are told that we have made a total sale of $1,300, which means that $1,300 minus the first 500, giving us $800, we're going to earn 20% of it, 20% of, of that amount in commission, 10% is 80. 10% is 80, so it's 80 times 2, which is 160. You just add up the two figures, 160 plus 75, whatever that happens to be, 5, 13, there you go. It looks like we're going to earn $235 in commission. Number 5. In number 5, we are told that we have 1,040 letters, we have 3,000 coupons, and each envelope has one letter and two coupons. The question simply is how many coupons are we going to have left over? It's very important, it is very important, it is crucial, it is imperative, it's absolutely essential that you have the book in front of you. It makes it easier because I don't I don't want to write out everything that will let, that will take far too much time. Do you understand? So how many coupons are we going to have left over if we were to stuff each envelope with one letter and two coupons? Well, it's very straightforward. We have 1,040 1, letters that we're sending out, so we're going to end up using 1,040 times 2. 1,040 times 2 is 2,080. There you go. We're going to end up this many coupons and we have 300 to begin with, uh, 3,000 to begin with. And that's all there is. 3,000 minus 2,000 will be 1,000, so it's 920. It looks like at the end of the whole job, we're going to have 920 coupons left over because we want to put only two coupons in each envelope. Number six. Number six, we are simply being asked to find the coordinates of R. And this is what is given to us. This is P, Q, and R. This is the guy we are interested in. Let's see what else we are told here. 5303, this is 03, this is 53. And we are further told that this is the right angle and this is the right angle, which is very important, which is a very important bit of information because if that is right angle, this must also be right angle. So let's begin. Also, we are told one more important thing that this is 45 degrees. We are told that this is 45 degrees. If that's 45 degrees, that's their way of saying that this triangle here, this right, this triangle right here, is an isosceles triangle, which means distance from here to here is the same as the distance from there to there. There you go, we are done. Distance from here to here, x distance is 5. This is 5, 0. So this must be 5, and since this distance is equal to that distance, from distance from here to here is also 5, but it's negative 5. The y coordinate is negative 5. There we go, we're done. This is 5 and negative 5. Number, number 7. Number 7, we are told that the regular price is 500. We're going to reduce it by $150. Question simply is how much is percentage reduced? How much is percentage reduced? There's not really much to do here as you can clearly see. 10% of 500, 10% of 500 is 50. 10% of 500 would have been 50. We're reducing it by 150 which is three times the amount so we're reducing by 30%. That's all. But if you want to do it out, it's just 150. We're reducing it by 150. And as a percentage of 500, this is what we are interested in. Divide top and bottom by 10. We are left with 15 over 2. Multiply that top and bottom by 2. 15 times 2 is 30. 50 times 2 is 100. There you go. It's 30%. Price has been reduced by 30%. Of course, 30% because 50 represents 10%. And therefore, 150 should be 30% because it's 3 times the amount. Number 8.
in number 8 we are given 1 half minus 1 third plus 1 third minus 1 quarter plus we have no choice but to write everything out plus 1 quarter minus 1 fifth plus 1 fifth minus 1 sixth and the question simply is how much is that quantity well as you can clearly see that once we remove the brackets once you remove all the brackets once we get rid of all the brackets and we can remove the brackets very easily because each each of the brackets has plus sign in front of it so removing the bracket is not an issue once we remove all the brackets we, we can clearly see that we have a negative one third and a positive one third they cancel each other we have a negative one quarter and a positive one quarter they cancel each other similarly negative one one fifth and these are going to cancel out what we're left here is one half minus one sixth just multiply top and bottom by three here so we have three six minus one six which is simply two six and that's just one third the answer is one third number nine number nine So as I said before in the beginning of the video, we today we're doing problem solving questions and eventually we'll also do the data sufficiency problem obviously. Number nine. Okay. Data sufficiency problems are the ones where people have more trouble. I, I'm fully cognizant of it. Number nine, we are told that we're going to mow the grass for which we're going to get $11 per week. We're also going to, we're also going to walk the dog and for which we're going to get four dollars each day four dollars every day when we walk the dog question simply is how much money are we going to make in three three weeks in three weeks times we're going to make thirty three dollars for mowing the grass and in three weeks time for walking the dog we're getting four dollars each day three weeks is 21 days so it looks like we're going to make eighty four dollars for walking the dog there you go It looks to me that we're going to make $117 for mowing the neighbor's grass and walking their dog every day. And when they come back from the vacation after three weeks, that's what they're going to get paid. That's what they're going to pay us, $117. Number 10. Number 10. In number 10, we are, to number 10, we are told that we're going to have Forty-eight thousand dollars in profit, and profit is going to be split up. I don't know how to spell split. It's going to be split up between two owners and ten employees. The owners, we are told. The owners, we are told, are going to get three times a share of what each of the employee gets. So each of the owners gets three times the amount, so he gets 3x, he gets 3x, and each employee is going to get just one share. Whatever the employee share, we have a profit sharing scheme in this firm. There are two owners in this firm and ten employees, and the profit sharing scheme says, uh, says that whatever the profits are at the end of the year, the owner gets three times the amount of what, what each employee gets. I'm explaining too much. The 16x, the 16x, 3, 3, and 10, the 16x, and that has to equal $48,000 that we're going to split. Divide both sides by 16, and that gives us 3. There you go, x equals 3. But don't, don't stop right there. The question is not how much is the employee's profit sharing. The question is how much is each owner going to get. And the answer is each owner, because they get 3 times the amount, they're going to get $9,000. Pay attention. Because obviously 3,000 is going to be one of the answer choices, you sh that should not surprise you. The question here is, how much does each employee get? Number 11. In number 11,
we are going to go on a trip to Europe. We are going to convert. We are going to convert five hundred dollars into euros at point eight euros per dollar. Then we are going to spend three quarter of that money. And finally, at the end of the trip. Finally, at the end of the trip, we're going to convert back the leftover euro into dollar at dollar twenty per euro. The question simply is, how much money am I going to get at the end in dollars when I finish my trip? I started my journey with five hundred dollars. I convert all of those five hundred dollars into euro. However many euros I get, I spend three quarter of it. The remaining one quarter, that is uh, euros that I have left over, I'm going to convert them back into dollar at the exchange rate of one one dollars and twenty cents for each euro. Let's begin. So we know we know the exchange rate here is 0.8 euros for one dollar. So one dollar is equal to 0.8 euro. It tells us right here. We're going to convert five hundred dollars. If one dollar is this much. Five hundred dollars has to be eight ten times five hundred. There we go. Divide top and bottom by ten, and we end up with eight times five five eight five the forty. So it looks like we're going to get four hundred euros. We're going to spend three quarter of it, which means we're going to spend three hundred euros. We have one hundred euros left over. We're going to convert them back at the exchange rate of dollar twenty per euro. There you go. We're going to get one hundred and twenty dollars at the end. Our our remaining one hundred euros will convert back into one hundred and twenty dollars. Number twelve. In number twelve, we have x x x y y y y v. V X X Y W W and the question simply is what's the ratio of X or Y over V or W? These questions are not difficult as you clearly see, these are quite straightforward questions. You just have to make sure that you pay attention and you don't end up making careless mistake. X or Y, X or Y, there you go, there's two Oh, that's three, five, seven, eight. Looks like eight. And since there are one, two, three, four, five, six, since there, since there are twelve of them all together, if x or y is eight, the other must be four. There you go. The answer is two to one. Answer is two to one. Number number twelve. Number 12, or rather 13. We did 12 just now. Number 13 is what it is. We are told the 0, 2 lies on, on a line with an equation of 2x plus ky equals to 4. And the question simply is, what's the value of what? What's the value of k? Well, if this point lies on this line, then the coordinates of this point must satisfy this equation. Let's so substitute zero for x and two for k, or two for y. So two times zero plus k times two y is equal to two equals four. This is just zero. Two k equals four. K must be two. Nothing to it at all. It's just silly. Number fifteen. Number fourteen. In number 14, we are going to make a bouquet. Made up of white and red tulips. We have 15 white tulips and 85 
red tulips. The condition is that we must use we must use all of them. We cannot have any leftover. The question simply is what's the maximum number of bouquets that we can make given the fact they have to be used this thing bouquet made up of white and red tulips in a fixed ratio. I left that out in a fixed ratio. In a fixed ratio simply means that the number of white tulips and number of uh, uh, red tulips in each bouquet must be same. They all must look the same. The ratio has to be fixed. That's first condition. The second condition is that we must use up we must use up all the flowers. The question is, what, given these two conditions, what is the maximum number of bouquet that we can make out of 15 white roses and 85 red roses? Let's see. This is a very roundabout way of simply asking us what's the ratio of 15 to 85. Because that's the ratio we're going to use for all the bouquets. So we have 85 over 15. Let's reduce it, shall we? Let's divide top and bottom by 5. We get 3 here. 8 is made up of 1, 5. After we take away 5 from the 8, we have a remainder of 3. 3 goes and joins the 5, then becomes 35. And 35 is made up of 7, uh, 7, 5s. 35s are, uh, is 35, 7, 5s are 35. There you go, 17 to 3. That's all. So, white to rose is white for every 3 white. We're going to use 17 for, for every for every three whites, we're going to use 17 red roses, and since we divide it up in bottom by five, there we go. We're going to end up at 15 to 85, which means the maximum number of bouquets that we can make is five. We're going to have five bouquets, and each bouquet will have three red, uh, three white roses and 17, 17 red roses. The ratio is 17 to three, or three to 17. Number 15. Number 15. Oh, number 15 is just silly. They simply want us to find the average of all these numbers. 74, 69, 64, Sixty-four, seventy-nine, sixty-four, eighty-four, and seventy-seven. And the question is very straightforward. They simply want us to find the average of these numbers. Number fifteen. Let's see how the, how is it phrased. It says over the past seven weeks, this family has grocery bill that looks like this. What's the average? It looks to me that the average is going to be around seventy. It's going to be somewhere around seventy. So we're going to pretend that the average is 70. We're just going to pretend that the average is 70. If the average is 70, in the first week they spend $4 more than the average. The next week they were they spend dollar less, $6 less, $9 more, $6 less, $14 more, and $7 more. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, there you go. I see, I see a positive 7, a negative 6, and a negative 1. So they play no role. We have a positive 4. What else can we do here? We have a negative 6. I'm going to get rid of negative 6 and positive 9, it's going to become 3. So we have positive 3 and positive 4, that's 7. Oh, that's 21. 4 and 7 plus 21, so that's 21. And there are 3 weeks, uh, there are 7 weeks rather. There are 7 weeks. So it looks like, it looks like we were wrong. The average is not $70. Because the, had it been $70, they would not have had 21 extra dollars. They spent 21 extra dollars over the, over the course of seven weeks, the average was 73. We were wrong. The average is not 70, it is 73. Number 16. Number 16 is simply asking us for 125% of 5. Well, 100% of course, 100% of 5 is 5, and 25% of 5, of 5 is simply 1 quarter of 5, so that's simply 5 quarters, 
5 plus 5 quarters, which is simply 6 and 1 quarter. Because 5 quarters is 1 and 1 quarter. That was 16. Let's look at 17. In 17, we have to find the median of these nine numbers. And the numbers are 34, 29, 27, 46, 18, 25, 12, 35, and 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's very, that's very good. I just want to make sure that I did not leave anything out. Since there are nine numbers, the median will have to be the fifth observation. Four on this side, four on the other side, and the fifth observation is the median. We just have to locate the fifth observation. That's all it is. Let's begin. It's just pay attention. It's, it's not a very difficult question. It's very simple. Right there is the lowest one. There's one. Then we have 18. I see there there's two. Then I see 25. Oh, there is 16 I left out. 16 is two. This is three. Makes no difference. And then we have 25 is 4, there you go, we up to 4, you just to find the fifth one, there you go, the median is 27, because that's the fifth observation. What are the 6th, 7th, 8th and ninth observation, we really don't care, the median is 27, because that's the, that's the fifth observation, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's the fifth one. Number 18. In number 18, we are, we are told that we are going at the speed of 32 miles per hour. We are further told that we are burning 24 gallons per hour. That's how fast we are burning the oil. The gas we are burning at the rate of 24 gallons per hour when we are going at the rate of at the speed of 32 miles per gallon. The question simply is what's the mileage? What's the mileage? In other words, how much is the miles per gallon? When we talk about the mileage, when we are looking for a car, we ask what's the mileage of this car? How many gallons does it give per, how many miles can I drive per gallon? How many miles does it give me per gallon? There we go, we are looking for miles per gallon. Miles per gallon. Well, we have the speed, which is expressed in terms of miles per hour. That's the speed, miles per hour, which is... 32 miles per hour, 32 miles per hour. So this is simply miles per hour, it's just 32 per hour times. And now we have to get rid of this hour from the bottom, so let's put the hour on the top, hours and gallons. This is where the tricky part is. So we're burning 24 gallons per hour. So it's gonna be every one hour, we're burning 24 gallons. So here it says gallons per hour, here we have hour, here we have one hour. How many gallons are we burning? 24. There you go. Divide top and bottom by 8. That's 4 and 3. There you go. It looks like we are getting approximately one and one third mile out of every gallon of gasoline. Not a very good mileage. Barely one mile per gallon. One and one third. Number 19. In number 19, we are told that we drove from A to B. Well, we are going to drive from A to B. A to B. Done. And then we are going to draw back 10%. We are going to drive back 10%. Right. We are going to drive back 10%. The question simply is, what percentage of the trip What percentage of the trip have we completed at this point in time and we have driven from A to B and we are making our trip back and we have driven 
of the return trip. Well, since it's 10%, let's pretend that A to B is 100. If A to B is 100, then from here to here must be 10, 10 miles. So this is 100 miles, this must be 10 miles. We have driven, in other words, if we're going to pretend that the distance from A to B is 100 miles, we have driven 110 miles out of a total of 200 miles because A to B is 100 miles, our round trip is 200 miles. Divide top and bottom by 2, we end up with 11 over 20. Let's multiply top and bottom by 5, we're going to end up with 55. 20 times 5 is 100. It looks to me, it looks to me that at this point in time, we have driven, we have finished 55% of our round trip and 45% is left to go. We're going to stop right here, that's the end of the page, we're going to stop right here, we'll meet again tomorrow, we'll pick up from where we left off. In the meantime, if you wish to work with me, if you would like to hire my services to get you ready for the math portion of the GMAT, you can get, you can get hold of me by sending me an email. Visit my website at kashwaniprev.com, send me an email and we'll talk some more. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.